Howdy, I'm Matt, Chief of the Flutter Bounty Hunters, and today I'm proud to announce the release of version 0.2.0 of Super Editor. Super Editor is a toolkit for building document editing experiences with Flutter, and today our flagship feature is mobile support. So you can now edit documents and use our completely custom text field when you're working on Android and iOS. Let's go take a look. Again, this is release 020, which is available on Pub as of now. What's new in version 020? Well, for those of you who maybe haven't seen Super Editor in the past, here's what the example app looks like. And in addition to our existing desktop and web support, we now have support for mobile. So let's take a little bit of a deeper look as to what that means. Here's a video that we can watch of the mobile app in action on iOS. You'll see that we have a traditional blinking carrot in an iOS style. The Android version looks like an Android carrot. You'll notice that we can drag around with a magnifier. That magnifier is painted by us, not the operating system. You can double tap for selection where you get the standard iOS style uh, expanded selection drag handles. You can drag across paragraphs, across any nodes in the document. You have auto scrolling. We also have floating cursor support. The operating system tells us where to move the caret and we apply that within the document rendering both carrots ourselves. We support the easy uh, easy toggling of styles, bold, italics, underline, strike through. And of course, you can apply multiple styles to the same segment of text. For editing purposes, you can add a paragraph. You can then make that paragraph a header. You'll also notice that when you create a regular paragraph beneath a header, that there's very little space between the two, but then you'll notice here in a moment when we add a second paragraph, we have more spacing between paragraphs. We'll talk about style sheets a little bit later, which makes this possible. And of course, once you've put in some content that you want to get rid of, you can then select it even across paragraphs and press delete, and we will honor that in the editor. So that's a quick little live introduction to what you can expect from Super Editor when using it on iOS and Android. Again, this version is styled for iOS, but when running on Android, you will have drag handles and uh, toolbars and magnifiers that look very much like the Android operating system. We also, just for the record, ha we have a completely custom text field implementation called Super Text Field. It also now has mobile support. It's kind of just like a taking a single paragraph out of an overall document, but the point is the support is there if you'd like it. Also, style sheets are added in this version of Super Editor. This is the very, a very early formation of a style sheet API, so expect this to change quite a bit moving forward, but hopefully most of the changes will be additive rather than altering the existing API. So let's take a look at the power that this provides. If you think about standard Flutter theming, if you think widgets, you think theming, and theming, historically, it involves a data structure that then applies to specific widgets. For example, a button will style itself based on a button theme data, and button theme data is just a data structure with some style properties. That's fine when every button should honor the same styles kind of regardless of where it appears related to other content. But what cascading style sheets or CSS have shown us over the years is that when you're dealing with documents, you often care a lot about what comes before or after a piece of content. And let's look at how we've adjusted styles based on that fact with this code sample here. You'll notice that we have two style rules on the screen. Each style rule has a selector. The selector in the first rule selects for any and all paragraphs in the document. Those styles will be applied to all paragraphs, and that style includes top padding of 24 pixels. 
But then we have another rule, which only selects paragraphs that appear after a level one header. Those paragraphs then have their top padding switched to zero. That's what allows us to achieve the effect you saw earlier, where typing right beneath a header results in very little spacing, but then paragraph to paragraph, you get more breathing room, which is what readers tend to expect. This is a rule that you will find in most documents around the web. You'll also notice here that we're not using edge insets. We're using something called cascading padding. This is a concept that I introduced specifically to support these ideas of cascading rules. The reason I had to introduce this concept is because edge insets, they don't have a, they, they don't allow for any null values. So they allow for zero values, but not null. When you're dealing with any cascading style, you need to differentiate between an explicit value of zero versus a value of I don't care. That's what allows you to take multiple paddings and combine them into one based on a priority order. So cascading padding here, it looks and acts just like edge insets that you're used to, except we can take multiple cascading padding data structures and merge them all together in a way that would make sense. If you try to do that with edge insets, your second edge insets will overwrite all the padding values in your first edge insets, and that would be no good for this use case. But again, speaking more broadly, the point is Super Editor version 020 includes the beginning of a style sheet based set of styling rules, which will allow you to achieve the kind of document styles that you're used to. Let's talk about some limitations. This is the first release of Super Editor that includes mobile support. And in fact, it's not even just about the work that we've done, but early in our work on version 020, we spoke with the Flutter team and we actually needed the Flutter team to alter the fundamental way that Flutter reports text changes from the operating system. If recently you've read any of the marketing material from Flutter and you saw something referred to as text deltas, that's a change that came from the result of conversations between myself and Renzo and Justin on the Flutter team. We identified the need to support these delta concepts and they were absolutely necessary for us to provide document editing on mobile. So this is kind of the first major use of this new Flutter text editing implementation. And then on top of that, of course, we've built our own version of the operating system, drag handles, toolbars, magnifiers. We've had to uh, create our own system for synchronizing between our document representation or our representation of documents versus the operating system's input method engine representation of text. For all of those reasons, bringing those complexities together, there will be some limitations for the time being. You should expect to find some bugs here or there. We're always going to work to find them and fix them, but no doubt there will be some bugs. You'll also notice that things are a bit sluggish. We're still figuring out the best way to move between the operating system input method engine and our document representation. Right now, that is not as optimized as it could be. We will optimize it more moving into the future. Also, when you do use Super Editor, please be sure when you're doing any stress testing, test it in profile mode or release mode. Do not use it in debug mode and expect that to represent the real performance characteristics. It will be significantly slower in debug mode. Also, at the moment, we don't really offer much in the way of styling controls for the drag handles, magnifiers, etc., the, the overlay controls. They look very close to how the underlying operating system would typically render them, and we think that's probably good enough for the moment, but we will be adding more control over colors and shapes and maybe allow you to even draw your own drag handles in the future. For now, uh, those controls are relatively limited. Looking ahead a little bit, what's next? Well, this is what's on our short list. I mentioned text deltas and I mentioned the input method engine for Android and iOS. It turns out that every operating system has some kind of engine associated with editing text. Up to this point, we have on desktop, we have actually dealt with every single key press 
on a keyboard. When you press the G key, we insert a G character. When you press shift and command and control, we check for all of those characters. We literally handle key by key on desktop. A downside of handling input in this manner is that there are certain keys that at least are not correctly handled by Flutter, but perhaps will never be correctly handled without some massive dictionary of mappings. And so the scalable answer here is for us to extend our IME or input method engine implementation from not just mobile, but to all platforms, Mac, Windows, Linux, and web. That's one of the things we're going to start working on fairly soon so that we can get some of these non-standard characters or at least uh, non-English characters. We can show them uh, whenever someone tries to enter them. Also, we would like for users to be able to take advantage of the emoji pickers that are available, at least on Mac, but probably all desktops, uh, as well as some things like spell check and, and other, other uh, injections of content the operating system wants to cause or invoke. To support any of that, we need to support the general input method engine. That's something we'll be working on. Also, inline widgets. If you want to show any kind of widget content in the middle of text, that's something that we're looking into. Flutter supports a very basic version of inline widgets. I'm actually also in talks with the Flutter team to look at an entirely revamped text layout system that would provide full control over inline widgets that are really needed for a document setting. We'll see how that goes, but it's on our radar. Undo redo is something I've been aiming to work on for a long time. It just keeps falling in priority a little bit, but that's still relatively close to a top priority. And then multi-user selections. One of our clients is using Super Editor for concurrent document editing. So not even just one, one document per user, but multiple users in a single document. We're going to add visual control for that so that every user's carrot can appear in the same document and reflect what the user is selecting at a given moment. That's all in the near term. As a reminder, funding from companies is what makes Super Editor possible. Superlist is the primary funder for Super Editor. You can thank them for the majority of the work that's been done in terms of funding. Also, Clearful was a major funder on our mobile support. And Turtle has also been a funder for text field uh, related implementations in the past. And I'm sure they'll be back around for some, some uh, extensions to the text field system in the future. So do be sure to thank those companies when you see them. They are the reason that I'm able to bring you Super Editor. Speaking more broadly, the Flutter Bounty Hunters in general is looking to repeat our success with Super Editor into many other projects of other types. Anything in the Dart and Flutter ecosystem is something we'd be happy to consider building if there are companies like yours that are interested in helping to fund those projects. We can help bring multiple companies together to fund features that all the companies need, which will lower the price per company, and it will eventually solve those problems for the entire ecosystem. If that's something you're interested in, please visit flutterbountyhunters.com. You can press the email button in the lower right corner and reach out to me about any project you'd like for us to work on. You can also see what we're up to and chat with us at Flutter Bounties on Twitter. So that is version 020 of Super Editor. Uh, we expect a more regular release cadence beyond this point, smaller features more frequently. So I hope you'll stay, stay tuned for that. I appreciate you tuning in for this video. And y'all come back now, you hear?